Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 basics tutorial. So in this video we're going to add a level progress system to the game and this is going to be in preparation for the next video when we finally bring everything together, all of our menus and everything, and we can easily then traverse between different levels every time the, the player completes a level. Just before we jump into that I just wanted to address the the view we have down here a few videos ago we have enabled the engine content so that we could use some of the standard assets from there we don't need that anymore so just in case you've forgotten how to get rid of this or how we activated it to begin with and you're probably wondering maybe why i have the c classes as well and you may not that's just because i have been adding some c into other projects so to get rid of these when you're not using them or if you just don't want them cluttering the the view up we go down to the view options and we just untick the show c classes and we untick the show engine content. And then we're left with the content folder, which is basically just the folder we're actually working in with the assets that we have been bringing in ourselves. So with that done, we'll go to the blueprints. And like I mentioned before, anything which is going to be driving the logic of the actual game or will be responsible for deciding what happens next and things like that in a game as simple as this especially in most single player games you'll put a lot of this logic inside of the game mode so we're going to open up the game mode and if you're not already here we want to be inside of the event graph right at the beginning where we have the event begin play now what we're about to go through will look a little bit complex and the logic is going to be quite chunky so it's going to get quite messy as well so i think to avoid missing anything or overlooking any of the steps that we need to do I'm going to kind of go through all of the logic in one go without explaining anything and then when we have all of our blueprint nodes in place I'll return to it and just explain what's happening just to make sure that everyone is following along so if we get to a stage where you don't quite understand what you're doing or why adding something don't worry about that I try not to do this too often when we're adding big chunks of logic like this I think it's going to be the best way to approach things and also if you do need to pause the video look over your code and see what's happening and see if you can work out exactly why I'm adding the nodes in that's even better because you're going to get a really good understanding then of what we're doing so to begin with when we're in a level this is going to be called when we load any level the very first thing we want to do is to find out the name of the level that we're on uh, because names in unreal are basically represented as string values so there's a node ready for us to do this and it's called get current level name so we're going to use the get current level name node and we can see here as i said this is returned as a string value if you highlight over this so the next thing we want to do is to have a place to store all of the levels that we have in the game so we're going to create a new variable and i'm going to call this levels at the moment this is of type boolean so i just want to change this to be a string so it matches the variables we're returning here and if we hit compile we'll see that this just gives us the option to enter a single string value which will just be one level and we want a number of levels so we're going to go over here to this small icon and we're going to change this from a single variable in the drop down we can see we have the option for an array which is basically the small grid of squares so if we hit the compile button again we can now add a number of different elements into this array for this game i only need two because i only have the two levels and you just simply need to enter the name of the levels that you have in your game so for me i have main one and i have main two so this is context sensitive. We need to make sure that these are spelled exactly the same as you've named the maps that you created because we will be checking against these later. So off of the get current level name, the next thing we want to do is to call a for each loop. And there's actually a better option that we get given inside of Unreal and that's a for each loop with a break. So this means that when we hit a certain condition that we'll be looking for, we can break out of the loop and stop doing any further logic. And you'll see here as well that we have one argument here, which is for the type of an array. So we're gonna drag in our array into this and this is what we'll be checking against. So for every element inside of our array, we're gonna do some logic in our loop. Now the next thing is every time the loop goes through, it's gonna add one to the index and we want to track this just to keep things tidy so we don't have too many wires going around. So we're gonna drag off of here, promote this to a variable and I will call this the current index. Plug this into the loop body and obviously we're gonna be checking things. We want to find out whether or not the level we're in is uh, within the array. So really whenever we check things we'll be using a branch so if we get a branch and there's going to be two things we actually want to check to make sure that the the logic we have is either going to be valid for loading a the next level or whether it's and that's going to be off of the true branch or whether or not we're at the end of the game and we need to show the game over screen which will be the false branch and to check these two different outcomes we're going to use an and boolean so we have our and boolean and the first thing we want to check is whether or not the current element in the array that we're checking against is the current level that we're in so we're going to pull off of here and we're going to get an equal to string so we'll find out whether the current element so the element inside of this level array that we created is the same level that we're currently in 
So we're going to plug that in here and we already have the current level that we're in over here. So we're going to pull off and we'll just plug that in to the second argument. I'm going to double click on the wire so that we get a reroute node and just make this a little bit tidier. And then the second thing we want to check against is if we are in a valid level, we also want to check that the for each loop is the index is within the constraints of the length of the array. So to do that, we're going to pull off of the array uh, the levels array that we created and we are going to get the length of this array we're going to take one away from the length just because this is a zero based array so integer minus an integer and we're going to find out just here whether the current index so we'll control drag the current index in is less than so we'll pull off of here and get an integer less than an integer the length of the array minus one so basically if we're outside of the array then we're going to do something different and I'm just moving things around here to try and keep this as tidy as possible because as I said this is going to get a little bit cramped as we go through okay so that should do for now so these are the checks that we want to do to make sure that we're still in a valid level and that there's a level left to move to so if we're outside of the length of the array or if we're at the peak of the array so the array indexes we could possibly go to our either main one or main two so if we're on main one we're going to be less than the total value if we're on main two then we're not going to be less than we might be equal to which means we we don't have main three to move on to because i haven't added that into the array which probably means we're on the final level so we want to show the game over screen so with that done we can add the logic in to progress to the next level or at least store a variable ready for us to do so so off of here we actually want another variable now so i'm going to create another variable and i'm going to call this one next level and this doesn't need to be an array so i'm going to go back over and turn this down to a single variable again but it does need to be a string i'm going to alt drag this in to set the variable and what i want to do is i'm going to pull in the control drag in the levels array and i want to get a, a an element from this array so just type get choose one of these options and plug that in to the next level argument and what we're going to do is we will get the current index again so this is why we've made a reference to this so that we don't need to keep dragging it across this time we're going to add one to the current index so integer plus an integer and we're going to plug that into the element that we're getting so this is basically the section which will store the name of the next level that we can load so that's the logic there that we needed and the final thing we want to do is to call a custom event that we haven't made yet so if we come back down here and we'll right click and create a custom event and I'm just going to call this break loop and like I mentioned we're using a for each loop with a break so we can just plug this into the break command here and then after we've stored the name of the next level we want to call the break loop function or the break loop event and that's just so that we don't do something by accident and uh, continue going through the loop and change a variable that we don't need or replace the name of the next level to something that we don't want it to be so that is all of the logic done if there are more levels to play and if the player has completed the level so now we want to check whether we are at the end of the array or if the the level that we're on isn't valid or something so to do this we're going to come back down to the branch that we made and we actually want to do another branch check off of here and what we want to find out this time we're going to use some variables that we have over here we still want to use this the length of the array minus another value but we want to find out whether the that value is uh, the current index so we'll pull off of the current index and get an equal to integer and we can just pull off of this value here as the second part of the argument and we'll plug that in to our branch and then off of here very similar we're just going to alt drag in the next level we'll set this when we set this i'm just going to set this to a string of my choosing you can name this whatever you want but you do need to remember what you uh, put as the argument here so i'm just going to give this the word end again this will be case sensitive so make sure you remember this later and once we've done that i'm going to set this to break loop again so whether or not we succeed or fail on the first branch check we're always going to be breaking the loop so we break out of this uh, for each loop so that we don't set the name to be something else on the next level name so at the moment this isn't actually going to do anything nothing's really changed this is just getting all of the variables and storing the values that we need to manage the level progress like i mentioned all of this is going to come together in the next video but what i wanted to do is just spend this little bit of time at the end of the video to recap what we're doing here so that it does make more sense so at the beginning we're coming in we are getting the value or the name of the current level when we have that ready for use we're going to enter a for each loop which is going to loop and do this logic the the checks here once every time for the number of elements in the array that we have so at the moment i have an array with two elements which is main one and main two which are two levels and we also have our break loop logic so normally a for each loop would do the logic exactly once for every element in the array regardless of what else happens unless you manually break out of it some other way the difference here is that we have a break option uh, readily made available to us which means that this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go through every single time because we have certain values that we want to check against 
And if we hit that criteria, then we just want to bail out of the event anyway, because we found the correct thing to do for the level progress. So the first branch check we have here though is checking whether the current element of the array that we are in based on the array index is equal to the name of the level that we have loaded. So if we have main one loaded and we are in the first point of this loop, then this is going to come back true. We then have our and boolean check. So we also want to make sure that if the current level is the same as the current index array, we also want to make sure that this is less than the total number of items in the array that we have. And this is just to make sure that even if we're on the other option at the moment would be that we were on level two, and the for each loop had gone through the second time, it doesn't necessarily mean that we want to progress to the next level because at that stage there are no future levels to load. So if both of these return true, so we are on a valid level and there's at least one level left to load, we're gonna go through to our true condition. We're gonna set the name of the next level in the array. So we're doing that by getting the current array that we have. We are getting the current index plus one. So remember that at the moment, this has gone through once. So the current index is main one. We're adding one to this, so that that'll move it over to main two. And we're storing main two as the next level to load. And then we're breaking out of the loops so, so that nothing else can change this because we now have the next level that we want to be loaded stored. So the other option is that this fails, which means we either are not on a valid level or that we are at the peak of the array. So there's no further elements to load. So we're going to go down to our false branch, uh, just really a safety check to make sure that the current index is in fact correct and that we don't have some logic issue here so that the current index is the, uh, the, the length of the array minus one to make sure that we're in bounds still. If that's true, then we know that we're on the final level the player's completed the final level. So we're just going to override this a little bit and we're going to store this value for use later in a check that we're going to do in our level complete function that we've currently got really is just a placeholder. And then in the same way really that if we've done this, so we still have something stored specifically that we want to use, then we want to break out of the loop again so that this for each loop doesn't call anything else and maybe filter back up here somehow and uh, replace the, the name of the, the next level variable that we've just created. So that's really what we're doing. As I said, it's, it's quite simple, but it can look a little bit complex when you come into this, possibly for the first time. So with that done, we're going to compile this. This is everything ready for the next video. And that will be the video where we bring everything together. We're going to add a couple of extra functions. And what you'll have by the end of that is a fairly dynamic level loading system, as long as you have a linear level progress system, like we do in this game, where you can start adding as many levels as you want, and it will progress to the end of them, regardless of what you add in. As always, though, if you've enjoyed the video, I find it useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with the latest content coming from the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.